Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the McKinney TA2771 full surface hinge is what it is. This is a TA2771. Here's what it looks like. It is certainly, when it comes out of the packaging, an unusual looking hinge when you open it up. It starts to take shape. It's a full surface hinge. As you can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here, um, you're going to notice, however, that the you're going to notice that the leaves, you know, even when they are completely parallel, do not make for an installation where the margin on the jam side is going to be flush. Um, when compared to the door side. And the reasoning, while this is indeed a full surface hinge, it's also intended for installation on a hollow metal door. So the this plane here is not at the same depth as this plane here. And the reasoning is, is to account for the inset that occurs on all hollow metal doors. Um, it would be incorrect to have a hollow metal door in a frame without an inset. Um, Aluminum storefront is different. Aluminum storefront is either an eighth of an inch or flush. Uh, eighth of an inch inset or flush, so that's typical for aluminum storefront. But in hollow metal door work, which is what McKinney's in, intending these for, certainly, um, you're going to have an inset. Uh, and that's why this hinge, even though you were to lay it on your desk, it would lay flat. It just would not lay, well, it would lay kind of flat. Uh, it just wouldn't lay completely flat uh, because that leaf is, is, is biased because of the bend. Okay. That's where the leaves are basically parallel. So we've discussed that at length. Let's move on. Where would you use this hinge? Well, a situation where you are surface mounting a door in a frame, uh, a door into a frame, and the hinge you're going to use, I should say you're surface mounting the hinge on the door that you're hanging in the frame. Why would you surface mount something? Well, a lot of people will just opt for a surface mount because they have a problem with the door reinforcement or the frame reinforcement, possibly in this case, case both uh, you have a problem with. Um, so you'll just, you know, look to surface mount it, mount it. You'll also see surface mount hinges used in those installations where you're doing something atypical, um, where you are dealing with, um, you know, a channel iron frame and a door that has metal cladding on it and there's no prep in the edge of the door for a hinge. Uh, you just simply have to be mindful that that is based on having a, an, an inset on the door and if you're going to install that so that literally everything was uh, flush with the face of the frame you're going to probably need to pad the, the jam leaf out. So what leaf is what on this? Which is the leaf that would go to the frame. Well, the frame is going to be the narrower leaf. Um, not that you couldn't install it the other way, but generally frames are narrower. They give you less room to work with than would the door. So the door leaf is certainly going to be larger. Uh, this hinge features a non-removable function. If you were to uh, loosen that set screw, you would be able to, you know, eventually pry something underneath this pin work that out, drive that out, uh, you'd be able to then and, uh, insert a long piece of rod, tempered steel, and tap that button tip out. Why you would end up doing that? Well, you obviously want to separate the leaves. I would, when installing this, I would certainly not look to separate the leaves when I've installed a full surface hinge. Um, you know, get the door in the frame, shim it all the way around so that it's in exact positioning simply place the hinge on the door and frame, make sure that that vertical axis of pivoting is exactly where you want it, right in the center of the installation. Mark your holes, drill your holes, tap your holes, whatever it is that you're doing uh, for the installation method. Um, let's take a look at a couple of basic dimensions. The leaf thickness ought to be 134 thousandths. My caliper's telling me about 143 thousandths on the door leaf. The frame leaf, the frame leaf, about 137 thousandths. Okay. 
This is a four and a half inch tall hinge. Okay, four and a half. The width is less important, but we can measure it here as well. So it's about four and a sixteenth wide. Okay, this is going to include um, fasteners. Let's take a closer look. For the um, possibly the frame side, uh, you're going to be using uh, likely those 1224 flat undercut head machine screws there, uh, assuming that you're going to drill and tap. Okay. You also will get wood screws, and this is just a standard screw package that you're going to get with countless other products from um, McKinney. The door side is meant to be through bolted, is how that is. We're going to have the through bolt. So this is what would be called a TBGN. TBGN, through bolt and grommet nut, is what this is known in the industry. If you use the abbreviation TBGN, this is what you mean. This is nothing other than a quarter 20 machine bolt with a uh, oval head and then the grommet nut on the other side. Okay, You're going to drill a hole right through the door. Well, not right through it. I would prefer to drill it from either side because I never can really get the drill bit straight. And plus, when, you know, when you're drilling through the door, you can get through the outside pretty well. Um, use a center punch, drill the outside. But when that drill hits the inside face, that drill has the drill bit has a tendency to walk a little bit because it um, isn't immediately feeding into the steel or cutting into the steel. Um, you know what you might you know if you do this a lot, you might want to um, you know get marginally sophisticated as to how you do this. You might use a drill press if you're going to go through the door. You might come up with a funny, uh, unique center punch that will fit through the hole that you drill so you can just lightly tap it to get your drill bit started or just measure from both sides. This is going to be quarter 20, no doubt. Um, the length of the bolt, about 2 inch. Now the grommet nut diameter is 0 0.382. 0 0.382 up over here, okay, has an OD of the head of 0 0.623, 0 0.623 and a thickness of the head, 0 0.134, 0 0.134. So nominally, you're going to be drilling a quarter inch hole on one side, a 3 eighths hole on the other side. Um, if it was me, I'd probably be drilling a hole slightly larger than that. And when I say slightly larger than that, I would understand the decimal size, 0 0.25, 0 0.382, uh, basically, I would use my wire drill index, and I would go to a wire size larger than that, something that would be in the 20 thousandths range, you know, just to give myself a little bit of movement of the bolt. Otherwise, you're going to be in there and filing the hole a little bit. Um, so that's probably what I would end up doing uh, on that. And then, of course, on the outside, you are indeed going to see that screw head. That's what that's what that's going to look like in terms of a security fastener. Uh, McKinney, I don't believe they have security fasteners in um, uh, TBGNs. Reach out to us, though. We'll be able to source for you security bolts in a quarter 20. Um, that would work just fine. What some people do, admittedly, is they will install that, and then they're going to take their countersink, and they're going to smear that out is what they're going to do. I don't recommend that because if you have to service this, you're going to end up grinding the head off um, if you can't get the door open. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if you were to leave it exposed like this, it would take nothing other than a screw gun to potentially get inside of your door. So that will need to be thought about, um, you know, etc. And the same for the uh, frame side. That's just going to be a Phillips uh, on that uh, 1224 machine screw. We can also provide security screws for that material. So reach out to us. We'd be happy to oblige. Uh, let's switch now to the screen view and let's take a closer look at the supporting documentation. So this is indeed the hinge that we are looking at here. You're going to notice that they put those bearing packets in an unusual location when it comes to hinges. Um, I can only theorize the reason that they do that is because it must have everything to do, well, 
It may have something to do with the design of the removable pin. This They, you know, they may, you know, one of these are going to be a cap, the other is going to be a pin. It could be the length of the cap is longer, and they're going to move the bearing packet away. I don't know why they actually do that. That's, that will be a curiosity that we will have to allow um, to exist unanswered for the time being. So let's look at the extended description. Recommended for use on average frequency doors and or medium weight doors. Sure, if you have a very heavy door, a very high frequency application this is not the right hinge you're going to want a continuous geared aluminum hinge that you would order from McKinney's sister company Pemco hinges may be used on channel iron frames sure but again we have that inset and let me just illustrate the inset um, before we move on you have your your frame uh, you may have a channel iron frame as they said earlier so a channel iron frame is going to be you know a big piece of C channel like this and the door what I'm driving at the door sits in the di the dimension from the face of the frame to the face of the door that dimension is called the inset the store is not flush if you're gonna do a channel frame you can bring that door in a little bit not a big deal to account because your hinge leaf is kinda like that if I were to exaggerate it screws through bolts. Okay, that's the inset. That's what we're refer what we are referring to. Five knuckle. You can see why they would call it a five knuckle hinge. Prime coat. Uh, I don't know if it's available in other finishes. I know that it you know it it, it is possible in other finishes, um, but they only list prime coat. It's made of steel. This is a steel base hinge. I'm sure we can order this in a non ferrous base like stainless. Now, there's a link to the cut sheet. Let's take a closer look at that. Uh, actually, that is a better uh, document called template. Okay, so we just have those reversed. So the cut sheet is here, shows us our options, does show us our application, illustrates the fact that it is an inset. You can do it in four and a half inch or five inch. You can do them in steel, which would be the 2771, or non-ferrous, stainless. Um, it's passivated, and stainless steel base material, polished and passivated. So um, certainly they can do it brushed or polished. And passivated, and I'm not an expert in that regard, but I know that uh, that process of passivating on stainless works to remove resi residual magnetism and there are applications where the steel must be passivated the stainless must be passivated also uh, a bronze based material can be done as well um, and apparently they can powder coat them which I'm not surprised which means they can do this in all sorts of finishes you know your cr your chromes your nickels your brasses your bronze satin polished oil rubbed um, and obviously powder coated uh, TC, t pardon me, TB would be a concealed bearing. The TB option would be a superior product to the TA for two reasons. The bearing packets are not exposed. The bearing function of it is a concealed um, sort of capability of the hinge, number one. Number two, so number one, it's a cleaner look. Number two is that the TB is about 20% more capable of carrying the load. Um, in that regard. TCA, same sort of concept, concealed bearing. The TB does not have bearing packets. Um, the TCA will be concealed and feature bearing packets. Hospital tip can be done. That means that nothing can be placed over the top of this knuckle. Uh, it will be literally rounded and ground down so that people can't ha hang something on there, you know, a shoestring or things of that nature, and it's meant to be ligature resistant. Okay. Now back to the document called template. Here it is. This will give you all of the dimensional properties of what we are looking at. And you'll note they call out the inset here, eighth of an inch. You know, I, uh, an inset on a door is not quite an eighth of an inch, but that is certainly close enough for argument's sake. Location of all your holes. They give you a D dimension, 
which um, is therefore purpose is therefore for you know for the fact of of knowing where you know what what the diameter of the barrel is I suppose some people do ask that um, I don't see necessarily where that's going to fall in line I would be locating my holes at an inch and a half from the center line of the gap between the door and frame to that first hole and then likewise okay you also have an E dimension and an F dimension which are listed here as well and that does change based on the hinge model number that you're working on now there is a link below this video to the manufacturers page here which will allow us to pull up not only all of the McKinney products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation but also a link to the manufacturers website as well as a link to the full product catalog that's here suffice it to say that McKinney is a comprehensive provider of all things uh, hinge related so if you're looking for you know every type of butt hinge imaginable that would be a uh, this would be a document to review older versions of the catalog are also listed here for historical purposes we even have a McKinney catalog from 1929 suffice it to say they did not have a TA 2714 or pardon me a TA 2771 hinge in that 1929 catalog they were known for forged iron hardware if you're in New England well may, well sure yes definitely New England uh, or in the Carolinas I've seen a lot of this hardware uh, installed on older structures um, you know historical North Carolina things of that nature so almost 100 years ago this is what McKinney was producing let's wrap up this video on camera Now it is fairly unusual to sell a full surface hinge, but occasionally you're going to do it because it's the hinge that really solves the problem best. Uh, you may have had a half mortise hinge on the door at one point. Um, you know, you may have gone, for, <laughs> who knows? You, got, you have a door and a frame, and that top hinge plate is always one that you're going to hear about breaking, or the bottom one as well, uh, or, the, or the middle one, whatever the case might be those spot welds holding the hinge reinforcing plates reinforcement plates to the door and frame um, can succumb uh, especially when people open up a door and they stick a wedge when the door is at 90 degree you know between the door and the jam to hold the door open if someone were to pull on that it cre creates exceptional torque exactly on those welds is exactly where that's going to go and you'll first start to bend the door and then you'll break that weld or your or the weld will hold but you'll tear the metal um, so you could have had a full mortise hinge. Well, then the hinge reinforcement on the frame broke, so you went to a half mortise. One leaf on the jam, the other leaf normally on the door. Well, then the door reinforcement plate broke. Now we're going to go to a full surface. Who knows why this client ended at this. You don't... Um, this, is a, this, this is a residential client. Um, you don't start out in a new installation using full surface. Although this client might have an application that's exactly perfect for this. Who knows? Maybe they've built a gate um, and they just want a couple of commercial grade full surface hinges. They like the look of this. It solves their problem perfectly. Who knows? So um, whatever brings you to a full surface hinge, we say welcome. If you have any questions on the TA2771 full surface hinge or any other McKinney product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.